Hey, Phil Plate from BadAstronomy.com here once again with a new episode of Q&BA, where I answer your questions about astronomy. Well, this week's question was sent in by Mark Tillotson from Emmaus, Pennsylvania, and he asks, What would we experience if the moon was not locked in its rotational period with the Earth? Would the rotational period itself have a visible effect? I.e., if it were to rotate in less than a month, or in six months, or one year? Well, I'm glad he asked that, because this brings up a pet peeve of mine. When you go out and you look at the moon, you always see the same face of the moon facing the Earth. You always see the same features on the moon. And it doesn't matter what phase it's in, it doesn't matter when you go in. You could do this a thousand years ago, or a thousand years from now, you will still see the same face of the moon facing the Earth. Some people say, erroneously, that this is because the moon is not spinning as it's orbiting the Earth. But in fact, it's because it is. It's spinning once for every time it goes around the Earth. And I, I have this on my website, and I talk about this, and people send me hate mail. It's like, yeah, this is so easy, especially if you have cheesy models that you can use to show this. So I can have my little model of the Earth here. It's a squeeze ball of the Earth. I'll crush your puny planet. And this really cool model of the moon. Now, the reason this is a good model of the moon is, is it's actually it's too big. It should be smaller than this, about a quarter of the size of the Earth. But the reason this is good is because it has two halves, one's red and one's yellow, and it's easy to see the difference. You can see the line between them. So if I try to rotate this thing or not, you'll be able to tell. Ah, and this brings up another good point. Uh, two points, actually. The moon takes a month to go around the Earth. So that's one month, and that's where we actually get the word month from. It comes from the word moon. The other thing is the difference between rotation, which is spinning on an axis like this, and revolution, which is when you're going around another object like this. This is rotation. This is revolution. In a gun, which is like a, you know, a revolver, the bullets are revolving, but the cylinder is rotating. So if someone sticks a revolver in your face and they say, give me all your money, you can say, yeah, that's a rotator, not a revolver, and then they'll shoot you. So sometimes science doesn't help you at all, but, you know, that's, that's up to you. All right, so here we go. Let's, let's put our model in motion. I'm going to put the red side facing the Earth just like this. So somebody standing on the Earth would see the moon as being all red. And I can show you that by doing it like this, right? And then I move the Earth. That's what they see. Put it back. Whoop. All right, so we started here. Now let's go a week later, a quarter of a moon's orbit later. And what, is the pe what do the people on the Earth see? They see half the moon being red and half being yellow, you know, in this model. And I can show you this by doing this and then removing the Earth. And that's what you see, half yellow, half red, right? So I'll put the Earth back here. And then a week later, another rotation, and now the moon is all yellow to somebody on the Earth, right? Whoop, all yellow. And then red and yellow again, and then finally back to red. That line stayed vertical the whole time, which, mean the moon, which that means the moon was not spinning while it was revolving around the Earth. And over the course of a month, you saw the entire surface of the moon. Now, we don't see that, right? We always see one side facing the Earth, and I can represent that by having the red side stay facing the Earth, and I'll do that by having to rotate the model. Watch. Watch the line. As I move the, earth, move the moon around the Earth, I have to rotate the model of the moon. This is kind of hard to do. There we go. To keep that red side facing the Earth. I have to rotate it with my fingers like that. You can see that the line is going from vertical to horizontal to vertical, to horizontal, and back to vertical again. And that shows you the moon is spinning once for every time it goes around the Earth. Now, why it does this, there's a physical reason. It's complicated. I don't have time to talk about it here. But it has to do with gravity and tides. Now, if you go to the show notes for this week's episode of QNBA, and you go to my blog and you look that up, I have a link to an essay I wrote about tides, and it talks all about this. It's actually a really cool thing that shows why the Earth's rotation is slowing and the moon is moving away from the Earth and why it always shows one face. There's a physical reason behind this. I just don't have time to talk about it here. You can, you can find that out on your own, or maybe I'll do that some other, some other episode. Well, the question we got this week was, though, what happens if the moon spins faster or slower? Well, I already showed you what happens if it doesn't spin at all. If it doesn't spin at all, over the course of a month, we get to see the whole moon. If it spins more rapidly, let's say once a day, right, then it would do this. As it's going around the Earth, it would spin really rapidly. And so over the course of just a day or so, you would see the entire surface of the Earth. As the moon goes around the Earth, and you would still see it in the sky doing the same thing it does now, the phases and everything would be the same. But what you actually see on the surface of the moon would change. You'd actually see what right now is invisible to us. Since the, far, since, excuse me, since the near side of the moon is always facing the Earth, the far side is always facing away. And so we never see it. If the moon actually rotated more quickly, or not at all, 
over the course of, of whatever length of time it would be, we would see the entire surface of the moon. We would see that half, which is basically forever uh, hidden from us. Now, this would be totally cool because you got to realize for the history of mankind forever, really, we have not been able to see that far side of the moon. It wasn't until we built rockets and went there that we could actually see what was over there. And in fact, if you go and look at an atlas of the moon, the far side of the moon, all the features there, all the craters and everything, they all have Russian names because it was the Soviets who went there first. They were the ones who got the rockets there, so they got to name it, finders keepers, right? But in a way, that's pretty cool still because it's always been hidden. Think about that. In all of history, nobody had ever seen a crater on the far side of the moon until we'd said, we can do this now. Our science, our engineering has advanced enough that we could do it. And that's what that's what exploration is. It's what science is. It's wondering what's on the other side of that hill. What's on the far side of the moon? And, and science is the way we answer these questions. And it, it really tells us what's really going on in the universe. And that's, that's why I love this stuff. Well, I've gotten great questions from you guys. Keep sending them in. It's thebadastronomer at gmail.com. So for QNBA and badastronomy.com, I'm Phil Plate.